Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Uh, today on the show, we have the wonderful Joyce Lynn. How are you? Hi. Hi, good. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, we are all very excited to uh, to start playing with some, some apps and some APIs. But before we jump into that, for those of us who aren't familiar with your work, do you want to give a background? Sure, yeah. I'm a developer advocate over at Postman, so it's a popular um, API development tool. I see you have an Apollo mug. So I Apollo, do have an Apollo mug, yes. Commonly used for GraphQL, if that's the right Apollo. Um, commonly used as a REST client for GraphQL. Postman similarly has um, a, is a client that you can use to interact with HTTP, so GraphQL, SOAP, REST, that kind of thing. Uh, the chat wants to know if we're wearing matching shirts, and now I kind of want to know that too. Did we wear... Oh, no, I'm uh, Hacktoberfest today, Postman. Ooh, I like your shirt. Yours is cool, too. All right, how do, yeah. I get, how do we get our hands on those? I'll send you one. Yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, so Postman is, um, like, okay, so if, if I'm going to try to put Postman into a, an elevator pitch, it is a an app that makes it really easy to test REST APIs. That is what you would probably tell your friend. We actually have a different elevator pitch that's like okay. this big. So Postman can do a lot of stuff, but I think for the purposes of what we're going to use um, today, that's a perfect elevator pitch. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, um, I'm actually, I'm, now I'm curious, like what else can it do? Because I've always thought of it as like, my, my experience of Postman is that I get kind of a, uh, a field where I can put the REST endpoint. And then I've got a, a selection of fields where I can control like the headers that I send. Um, and then where I can put in the body that I want to send. And then I, I get a results output. So that's the, as far as I've been aware, you know, granted, I kind of live under a rock sometimes. I, I thought I thought that was the whole app. So what else can we do with it? Yeah. And actually, you said it pretty well. A lot of people use Postman. People in the chat are using Postman and you use it to test, right? So right. you use it to poke it poke it endpoints and kind of inspect what you're getting back. Um, but the, you can actually write a test in Postman. So testers can poke at Postman, like test it, like the English word test, but you okay. can also write a test. And um, I've been with the company three years and over three years, they've really expanded the tool chain from just debugging and inspection okay. to design, development, monitoring, documentation, like a bunch of, a bunch of stuff around the entire development flow. Nice. Okay. Very cool. So I'm, I'm excited to play with that. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. Um, so our, our, our stated intention is we want to build a Jamstack app that uses some REST APIs to power it. And that's a pretty common workflow for the Jamstack. Um, but we also want to do some, some client side stuff. And when you're doing client side API calls, a lot of times you're going to need an API token. That's how you explain, um, or that's how you prove to the server that you're contacting who you are and that you have the rights to do the thing that you want to do. Um, in a Jamstack app, this is kind of tricky because like everything that you're publishing is a static asset, which means like, where do you put the token? How do you, because if you put the token into your client side JavaScript, somebody can just scrape that and then they can go impersonate you and suddenly you're in a ton of trouble because you've just exposed really sensitive information. Um, so we were going to show a couple of things today. Uh, first, I think you were going to walk us through how we can do those tokens in Postman securely. And then we were also going to look at how we can do uh, secure REST calls through Jamstack apps using serverless functions. Um, so basically, I think we can, uh, we can start by kind of pulling the data that we need using Postman. And then we can go as far as we can inside of Postman. And then when we're ready, We'll swap over, uh, deploy it to Netlify, and then set up a serverless function that can make those REST calls for us securely. Does that seem like, am I, am I getting that right? Did I miss anything? Yeah, I can help you with the Postman part. I can't help you with the Netlify part. You can actually build a complete Jamstack app in Postman. What? Um, yeah, but like it's, then people need Postman to like render it and you're not hitting it through like- Oh, browser. I get you. Yeah. Okay. And you that's can still build very it cool. for yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, cool. Yeah. So let's, let's, uh, I mean, let's, let's write some code, right? Let's switch over and see what happens. 
So okay, I, uh, I'm looking at a blank desktop. So what should I do first if we want to start building this app? So what are we building? So I think um, we need some oh, kind of a token. So code. And my guess is that I'm going to need to show this token on screen because we're going to have to be putting them around. So my thought is that we can do something kind of low impact, like Unsplash, that I can roll after the stream. Okay. Um, so that to me seems like a, an easy way to not necessarily give away the to you know, like get, not, not get ourselves into any trouble. It can't, you know, it won't cost money. I might get banned off on Splash, which would, be, which would be a huge bummer if the chat abuses my token, which I hope you don't, you hackers. Um, and, <laughs> and then, uh, and then I'll, I'll roll the token after the stream, and, and we'll be able okay. to, to do that. So that would be where I would start. Does that seem like a reasonable starting point? Yeah. So I, I was just asking you exactly where hackers, we would start. you you dirty hackers. <laughs> I I want to put some of these in mine. Um, <laughs> So some people will start with their API first, and some people will start with the front end uh, view first. And so there is a way to do both with Postman, okay. but if we want to start directly from the API just to kind of start in exploring it and seeing what we get back, let's look at the documentation for Unsplash. Yeah, so I think um, what would probably be an, a good one, I think, is if we go and look at their documentation, I believe we can do a search. And so we can set up a, a basically a, a app, and what that app is going to do is let you search for a term and get a few results back from Unsplash. That way, it's it's you know I don't want to focus too much on what the app does. I want to focus on what we're doing to enable the app. Um, and I, I think you know a single a single thing is probably the right thing. Um, we could even do let's see. There's here we go. There's a, a search. So we send in a search term. Um, we will be able to get the first page. We can limit to 10, that's fine. So basically we'll get the first 10 images for a given search term. Um, and I think we can just leave the rest of these as default. That Does that seem reasonable? Yep, and I've never worked with the Unsplash. Where is the auth? So I have, I'm not in yet, so let me, let me log in. I think I have a, I think I have an account. I really Don't. like Unsplash too, but I've never worked with their API. I can't believe I haven't. Okay, so I'm just going to get signed up real quick. And let's see if it wants to let me do this. Now I need this again. Generate a password. Okay. All right, I have, I have joined. Um, so demo apps, oh perfect, that's what we want. We want a demo app and then I won't upgrade it to production. So that's fine, we just get rate limited which is totally acceptable. Um, so let's see if it will let us build a demo app. Non-automated, yep, okay. Yep. Uh oh. <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna roll it, so yes. Um, do not, okay, yeah. All right, so um, this is a demo app to show how to securely make requests to REST APIs in Jamstack apps. All right, so now we have, I don't wanna apply for production, I want to get my credentials here. Okay, so here's here's the access key for our demo app. Um, and with this, I believe, if we go and look at the documentation again, um, I should be able to, let's see, authorization, you just send in your access key, right? So that's that's perfect, that's what we need, is just this this access key so um, at this point, we're ready to actually test this out, which means we need Postman. Postman, yep. 
Okay. Oh no, are you going to download it from scratch? I sure am. Okay. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, this one, right? Um, and then I need to download the app. Here we go. You're on Mac. Expanding. If we run into problems here, I can't help you. I uh, have only downloaded Postman once. <laughs> only once. <laughs> I yeah, I had it a long time ago. Um, uh, so yeah, so like, I, I want to make something clear here. What we're doing with Unsplash has has very little to do with. Um, like the, the app itself is kind of just the, it's a MacGuffin, right? Where we we need something that we send a token with so that we can show how to keep those tokens safe. Secret, yeah. Um, what we're doing with the app is kind of incidental, right? So all we really want to do here is make a request that uh, that requires a token so that we can show how we can write the code and ship the code without exposing that token. Um, so here we go. It just it, oh, there we go. Things are happening. All right. So I've got Postman over on my other screen. I'm dragging it into applications, and now we should be able to. Here yet? I think I might have to open it once before it shows up in Alfred. All right, Postman. Here. Opening. What's with the corgis? Uh, so the corgis are part of a, um, it's a, a community of like creators and, and it, I, I don't really even know. It, 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 to me, it's a very like, it's a supportive community of people. It's a, a discord called the party corgi discord. It was um, kind of kicked off from Chris Biscardi's stream and then has expanded over time to include a whole bunch of streamers, uh, content creators, bloggers, open source maintainers, and people who are like interested in getting into those things. So it kind of spans from people who've been doing it a long time to people who are still looking for their first job. And, uh, and this has been, it's, it's, it's really good. So um, does anybody have, somebody want to run the... <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so as a result, there are a, uh, a huge number of corgi jokes on this stream and and some of the other streams in the, the Discord network. Um, oh, party. Okay. Hey, so once upon a time, I apparently had this app and I uh, I did a bunch of stuff with it. So I'm going to clear yeah. all these because they're very old. Um, let's see. All right, so I'm ready now. I want to do some stuff. Okay. Um, so um, typically what people will do if Unsplash doesn't have like, um, you know, a curl request or a Postman collection or something like that, you could just recreate the request in Postman. Yeah. So that was kind of what I was thinking is like, I'm going to do something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to do a search and our search was where? Photos, search, search photos. Okay, so get search photos. So I'm gonna run to get search photos. No trailing slash. Okay, so that makes sense. I can yep, click send so and it's gonna fail. Okay. So then what? So you need to authenticate it by having, um, it looks like there were two different ways that they offered to authenticate. One was including, including a query parameter. Yeah, it did look like that. Um, so let's look at, where was it? Authentication. Um, so we can do an authorization like that. That doesn't really look like what we're after. But it looks like we can send an authorization header, which is probably the right move. Because okay. we wouldn't want to put this in the, key, in the URL, right? Because then it would show up in network requests. I guess exactly. the authorization header does too, but it's, it's at least slightly harder to find. Yeah. So pick one. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, we'll do we'll do an authorization header. Okay. 
So um, if you look at the way this is set up in the documentation, it's an authorization header with client ID uh, colon, I believe, or client um, ID space, your access key. Yeah. So what we can do is, um, and actually you went to one area in Postman. I, where yeah, I found a tab it. called authorization. Yeah, so if you click that drop down right below that type, these are the most common types of auth, but this one seems like a slightly different, like a custom auth. Yeah. So it won't be there, so we'll have to manually add a header. Okay, so I'm in headers. Mm -hmm. And then with this, is this just like I just write the header out? Yeah. Ooh, look at the autocomplete. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so then it was client ID, and then I need to put my key there. So I'll grab it from here. Okay, so there's my ID. So one thing is that normally if you're just working on your own, you're in your own, at the very top in the center, you see my workspace, mm -hmm. right? So you're hard coding, you just paste it in that key. Everyone can, well, no one can see it except for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> but, right. but one way, and I think you're going to go here with your fun, with your um, cloud uh, in a, later on, but we kind of want to protect this secret. Yes. Right? So if you can um, copy that to your clipboard and then variable that. You hackers, you you dirty hackers. <laughs> <laughs> and and when you say variableize it, do you mean like just kind of do like a, a environment so, variable, like a bash variable? Um, so we have Postman variables, and okay. you are about to enter a bash variable syntax. But I the was. syntax for Postman is double curly braces, and then the name of the variable. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So then I would do like, um, what would we call this? We'd call this unsplash access token. Okay. So now I need to create this. So I need to spell it right first. Um, and then I need to create this somewhere. Yeah, so it's if you hover over that right now, it's unresolved. So like you said, you can create it as an environment variable. There's a bunch of different variable types. But if you uh -huh. go up to the top right, that gear icon. Here? Uh, that one, yeah. You can add an environment. OK. And then this is production, or this is demo, demo environment, right, or whatever. Yeah. Like on Unsplash's demo app. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so then we would do like unsplash access token like this. Mm -hmm. And then do I just set that? Yep, so you can go ahead and set it there in the initial value. And then if you don't want, um, for example, uh, your teammates to have access to it, you would leave it in initial value. The current value is Postman's version of a session variable. So and like if I were to if I wanted to like make a request that would then update something or I wanted somebody to be able to, to sit and I'm trying, okay, how would I use this? What's a, what's a use case? Uh, a use case is if we're on the same team and mm -hmm. you want to keep your access token yours and I have my own, then you would actually um, pop your token into current value instead of initial value. I will see your initial value. Okay, so if I put it into current value, then would you still be able to use it? I will not be able to use it, but if you want to share it with me, then put it in initial. So it's, it's it. one way that okay. you can keep yourself, your stuff secret. So there's two levels of secret that we're keeping here, right? One is the environment variable secret, mm -hmm. and the other one is do you want to share it with your teammates or not? Got it. Okay, so, so basically I would be able to like override this locally if I wanted to use a different API exactly. token. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that seems okay, that seems good. Um so then I just hit add and I'm done or do I need to hit persist or um you can hit uh reset all. Oh wait, do you want to share it with me or not? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's okay. let's assume that this would be like we're you know we're on a team, we're using a company app and so okay. we would need to we would need to share this access token. Yeah, hit reset all and then hit oh. add. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. And, and so then from here, I could send it to you or to my team. Uh, you can share it in Postman to a more public setting. Yep. It, right. So when I hit invite, I would, I would put in my team's emails and then they would get a, a note that like they have access to this environment now. Yep. Cool. That's, that's super handy. Yep. Um, and really, really cool from a, like, 
sharing keys was always really challenging and like i'm not going to name names but i've worked at companies where the the way that you shared keys was there was a text file that just got shared <laughs> around to everyone which is terrifying but like that's you know that's how companies had to do it because what else were you going to do i've seen like one password has gotten a lot better at this at sharing secret stuff um but this is nice because it's right in my workflow and i'm not yeah. like copying out of one password and then remembering to to delete that value if i share it and this is just you're, built in, yeah. which is really nice. You're not messaging somebody or like emailing them a file. Yeah. It's a little bit easier, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm done here, right? I can just close yep. out. Close and that now... and then one more step. You need to select that environment from that drop down at the top. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. So it's it's set and it's not visible by default, but if I hover over, I can see it. So that would be a way to um, to to make this. And now if I run this search oh i need to add some parameters so let's add the query okay. and we'll search for a corgi of course of course and now we've got let's get a like a regular size small one and we have a picture of a corgi so that i mean that's that's awesome that that is really nice i love that we can get what do these do can't visualize that's okay what does visualize mean the visualize um, is a newer feature, but that's what I meant that you can build a Jamstack app within your um, oh, within Postman. Oh, I get it. So, like, yeah. if you wanted to, I could do something where I could ship like a um, like I could use the data out of the response to show like a simple preview, so that people could really quickly review what they were getting back. So, almost like an internal tool. Yeah, you could actually make like a gallery or a collage of yeah. photos and then just customize it with uh, HTML, CSS. That's really cool. OK, yeah. that is that is very cool. Um, awesome. I like this a lot. So this. I mean, th but this is great. This is what we needed, right? So we've we have figured out, like, if we recap where we started, we wanted to build this um, this Unsplash app. And we wanted to be able to query for a corgi, um, or query for whatever. So if I go in and I, I add a different value, we can we can say like hats, um, and then it's going to run a new query, and we'll get a picture of hats. So we basically now have the. This is kind of like the the raw backend that we would need to power a an app. Um, mm -hmm. If we want to show pictures of things, we can. We can send off these requests. We can get them back. Um, so from and what's really nice about this too is that we were able to to do that with a shared client ID. Um, that's really handy. So what are some other things that we could? I mean, there's a bunch of buttons in here, and I don't want to get out of this too fast because <laughs> I feel like it. You you said that uh, there's just a whole lot more that that Postman can do. So even if we don't use it today, I'd love to kind of just take a take a poke around and see what's going on in here. Yeah, so it looked like there were three types of ways to auth the Unsplash. There was a query parameter, the one that we use, which is adding a, an authorization header, and then there was an OAuth type. I don't know which type, but uh -huh. if we wanted to build like a different type of auth, we already looked at the authorization tab, and that allows us to, um, it, it abstracts. So say you're building this app and then you're sharing it with your teammate and you've gotten it to work. They don't actually care about how it works. This abstracts and like um, makes it so that you don't have to um, understand as much about the authorization process. Wait a second. So does that mean that I can set up like an OAuth workflow in here? You can. I'm not the OAuth expert, but I can <laughs> walk you through how to do it if you want to do it. Whoa. OK, so I, this. And like this postman provide a redirect URI and stuff so that we can do that? Yeah, if you actually, if you want to just open this up really quick, um, the, uh, sorry, the authorization tab and look at what. Yeah, I do. Yes. I want to see this. This is amazing. Okay. So now, um, so let me see. Is this too small? Can people even read this? No, no, sorry. It's my, it's my thing. Um, yeah, so. Click get new access token, that orange button. Okay. So what? Yeah, so you would enter in okay, hopefully you know <laughs> a lot better than I do. Okay. So we wanna send them to 
the authorize tab, which would be the auth URL. Callback URL, it, mm, let's see. So we don't have this, so this might not work for us. Uh, just because we don't have, like we don't have a redirect URI set up, so we might not be able to set it up today. Oh yeah, you do need to set your uh, permissions and scopes in Unsplash for this to work. Got it. Okay, so this this may not be the this might be kind of more of a rabbit hole than we want to fall down right now, but this is really really powerful because we can go in and we can set up like this is where we send the authorization. When once we get that data back, we're going to send it to the the token, um, and it's going to send back a code. So we can see here that we're getting an authorization code. And so there's a lot of like a lot of options here. Um, yeah. So do, setting all this up and enabling Unsplash to, to work with Postman like this, mm -hmm. Postman will abstract um, the handshake that happens behind the scenes and then just add your authorization header at the time that you hit send. And you won't even see any of that stuff once you once you set it up. Yeah, that's really cool. And so what what we what we would need then is we would just take this uh, this token and the access token and the secret, um, drop those in here and here. We would set a scope so we could do something like public. And then I don't know if we would even need a state. I think that's oh I don't we that we could set that, but we don't I don't think we need it. Um, and then we can send however we need to. So I guess that would be kind of trial and error. Try it one way. If it works, great. If it doesn't switch the other way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that's what um, Postman's for. You just go click, click, change yep. this, and like, okay, it works now. And then this becomes a complete, like, this kind of gets packaged up, and it'll just be stored. So instead of having to set this up every time, I can just say, I want to do an OAuth token. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is amazing. Yeah. There's inheritance, too. So if you, you have one loose <laughs> uh, request right now, uh -huh. but if you save it to a folder or a collection, and say you add, like, your app uses... X number of endpoints, like 60 endpoints, yeah. you can have it all, you can set it up once and then have it inherit to the um, to the folder, or the director or the collection level. Okay. I. What do you think, Chad? Should we try this? Because I kind of want to get this to work. And like, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a short episode if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I expected this to be like pretty simple because, you know, it's, it's like, this is the value of, of these approaches is like Postman yeah. makes this easy. Serverless functions make this easy. Um, but we're like five minutes away from having a, a working <laughs> Jamstack app. So, okay, maybe what we should do here, here's what I'm going to do. Let's, let's build the Jamstack app and then we'll come back and we'll do this with our extra right. time so that we definitely right. get the, the, the goal and then we'll come back and play with our, our bonus time. We have ambitious people in the chat. Oh, the chat. I love the chat. They're like, they're like the, best the best bad influences <laughs> <laughs> all right let me pull up a uh, let me pull up my terminal here and let's create uh, a new folder so we're going to create a project we'll call it secure jamstack api requests sure um, and then we're going to move into it we will npm init and then we'll call it secure API. Yep. Okay, good. All good. Well, I should have just run the yes command. Um, okay, so uh, so now if I, let's get in it as well. And I'm going to use, I don't know if I need anything. I can probably just run this as a, as like a plain old HTML file, I think. Um, so let's do that. I'm going to, I'm going to install as a development dependency serve so that we can run like a, uh, just a local server for it. So let's, uh, let's open this up. And in here, we now have a really straightforward app. It doesn't do anything yet. Um, and it has the serve dependency, which is, which is nice for running a local server. So let's create index dot h or no let's call it let's put it in source we'll call it uh, index dot html and inside here we'll just set up as simple a site as we can um, we'll call it unsplash photo search and um, securely 
search unsplash using the Jamstack and serverless functions. And then down here, we're going to need to set up a form. And then below that, we need to um, display results. Okay, so this is this is our, our like basic setup here. Um, the other thing that we're going to need is a serverless function. So let's set up our functions, and then inside, I'm going to create one called search, or we'll call it unsplash search. Um, and inside here, we can export handler, and that is going to get the event. Um, and it'll return, for now, it's going to return a status code of 200 and a body of, um, we'll just JSON stringify uh, to do make search work. Okay, so that is our serverless function. And we can call that if we create our form. So let's make a form. And our action will be, or we probably want this to be async because otherwise it would have to reload the page and that's going to be a mess. So instead, we'll just, yeah, go ahead. Can you just, um, I've worked with serverless functions where I'm in the cloud provider and adding my function. But like, what do you, um, can you tell me a little bit more about like, I guess the scaffolding of this project and how you're Yeah. So what we're doing here is we're using Netlify functions. So what Netlify, like the whole goal of, of what we're doing with Netlify is trying to make it really, really simple to get something onto the internet. And the way that we do that is by saying, if you have a folder full of files, we will serve them. Um, so we want this index.html to be our website. And then going a step further than that, Netlify also provides functions, which is a, an abstraction over the top of AWS Lambda. And the goal is, rather than having to go to Lambda, define your functions, set up the, the config files, you know, set up your routing and, and all of that stuff, you can just drop a function into a folder, tell Netlify where that folder is, and we will deploy all of that for you. So, yeah, go ahead. So your, your Netlify hosts all of the files, including when you set up the function, it'll read from that file in your source control. And then from the files, you can also invoke those, instead of invoking like relative to the file, you're invoking to the cloud. Yeah, so when you deploy, what will happen is Netlify will, will find, um, actually, let me set up the file that we'll use to, to explain this a little bit better. So basically, when we get to our build, we're going to say that we want to publish as our website the source directory. Um, our functions live in the functions directory, and our command is whatever we want to run when we build. And so like right now, there's no build command, so it'll just run nothing. Um, but if I go in now and I run Netlify dev, I hope it works on the first try. Oh, I forgot to um, forgot to tell it to use the source directory for that. So let's the directory is source, and then I open it. What are you doing? What don't you like? Okay, so I think I just need to tell it what to do. All right, let me, let me just do it this way. because um, So we will say that the command is going to be um, let's see, dev, and it'll be just serve source. Right, so now if I run that to make sure that works, npm run dev takes this to serve source, which serves our function. OK, that's what we want. So then in dev, we also want to run that, npm run dev. And I think that'll just do it. We made some changes to Netlify dev, and so I'm still trying to figure out exactly how it all works. Um, let's see. It is. Unable to determine public folder. OK, so I did that. 
Oh boy. This is what I get for trying to do. I noticed you didn't look at the docs. I know. I'm just I'm out here <laughs> trying to do stuff from memory and I'm gonna regret it. Yeah. Um okay, so let's uh let's go to the docs. I'm gonna look for the dev. Where's my block? Oh my god, I'm in a loop. <laughs> okay. LFI CLI, that's what I'm looking for. So the dev block shows me a command. Am I doing this right? I swear I'm doing this right. Publish is dist. Maybe that's the whole problem is I just didn't have that published command. So let's try that again. It didn't detect my app server. What am I doing, y'all? What's going wrong here? I definitely should have read the docs. <laughs> uh, I don't know why it's not reading my stuff. You're being very, very rude to me, Netlify Dev. Um, okay, well, we need to figure this out because we need to make this work. So. Do what are you doing, it? computer? Why? That Why are you like this? Very much how I feel right now. So my port is quadruple eight. Um, are you gonna work? You're being very frustrating at the moment. Okay, so Netlify Dev. That's what you're supposed to do. Here's the publish directory. Okay. If I look for my netlify.toml, it's there. And so I run netlify dev. And it does pick up the stuff. Like, do I need to? It's always when I'm trying to show something off that it just straight up quits on me. How's your morning going? <laughs> your chat is hilarious. Mm hmm Yeah, they, they enjoy my pain. <laughs> All right, um, maybe, maybe now are you gonna read my, my stuff? Why don't you want to there is an app server detected though. That's, yep, yep, yep. Oh, what's up, Brian? I didn't, didn't even see you come in. Um, this is very confusing to me. Uh, okay, so the function server is listening. So what I'm curious about is if we run, if I just run it with source, is it gonna? I did set the directory flag. Do I need to just turn this off? That's my fault. That is definitely on me. Um, I just didn't need that that dev server at all. So Netlify is running it for me. But now, if I go to Netlify functions unsplash search, we get back the, the response. So, um, so basically, we are, listen, Chris, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're sass. Uh, okay, so we've got, um, we've got the, the server is now running where we have the ability to write a file here and we've got the ability to run functions here. Um, so to talk about what's happening, going back to the original question before I fell down that little miserable rabbit hole, um, we what we're doing is we're telling Netlify that the site lives in source and our functions live in function. So when you actually build the site, what it will do is it will say, okay, the static site is what's in this source folder. And I'm gonna deploy that to Netlify CDN the functions in the functions folder are gonna get processed for AWS Lambda, zipped up, and then sent up to AWS Lambda 
with all of the config to set up the routing and all those things. And then this dot Netlify functions here, this is actually a proxy. So we are redirecting uh, any request to dot Netlify slash functions to the AWS Lambda, um, or in this case, we're local. So we're, we're faking all of that, but um, it, in production, this is all running on AWS Lambda. And that means that like, as a, uh, as someone consuming this, I can't, all I can see is what comes back. There's no way to like inspect the source on this. Um, so I can't like dive in here and figure out what's going on. I can only see what comes back, which is why you would use a server to protect sensitive data because you, you can just say like, Hey server, give me a thing. And then the server controls what comes back. I can't inspect the source or dive in. Um, and that keeps our, our, uh, sensitive data safe. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So what are the alternatives? What are like the bad practices that you see? So the, the, like the worst practice would be if you were to, let's say, so let's do this the wrong way. Um, and then we'll, we'll refactor it to do it the right way. So if I have my, my form here and let's say that it's going to have a label, um, and that'll be for, let's see, we'll call it query. Um, and then. Here we'll have an input ID query name query type text uh, and then we'll have a button and that'll be a search. So then down at the bottom we can add a script and what our script will do is it will say uh, let's add a class to this. Um, so we'll get our form. We'll say const form equals uh, document query selector search form. And then we're going to say form add event listener click or submit. And we're going to get back an event and we can event prevent default, right? Then we want to actually send this off. So I'm going to use the, the built in fetch API. So we would do something like, uh, let's see, we can make this async. And we would say the result is like await fetch. And then we're going to send in our URL and some options. So what we would- Export that out of Postman. Oh, nice. Yeah, let's do that. So I want to export this out of Postman. And so I have my params and my headers. How do I do that? If you go to the right, the link that says code, um, yep, you can select your... Uh, what? Well, let's see if this works because <laughs> there's a little fiddling that you need to do. No, this is, I yes. mean, this is perfect. That's basically exactly what I was going to do. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab this and we will put it, let's just drop it right down here. Okay, so this, get our results out by is awaiting Axios this. Is Axios the new fetch? So Axios is, a, is an open source library that has like a bunch of, um, it's, it's kind of like a nice abstraction. It was really, really helpful before the fetch API came into wide adoption. The, the downside to it is that it's big. So if you use Axios, you're installing a bunch of extra JavaScript. If you use Fetch, uh, Fetch is really small. It's actually built into the browser on modern browsers and the polyfills are, are pretty small for it for older browsers. So you're able to um, avoid sending more JavaScript down. So in, in general, it's probably ideal to use Fetch if you can. Um, Axios is nice. Like it's a, it's a really good API. It's what I used for, for years and years up until like months ago. The chat has watched me forget how Axios works a thousand times. <laughs> um, but this is, uh, yeah, the, actually we don't even need to await here. Let's just, okay, let's run it like this because this, this is actually going to log the result or log an error. Um, but yeah, so my, my, my thought is that, uh, let's use the browser when we can. So for the moment, what we are doing is we are sending in, um, the query as a query string. All good. Okay. So let's just run this and see what happens. So I'm going to, uh, it's hard coded to hats right now. So no matter what we do, we're going to get hats back. 
but this, this should work. Um, so I'm gonna go back out. Let's go to our homepage. And if I open up the console here and search and just submit, then we're gonna get back. Uh, I think I can go to the network and get a better, make this bigger. And I should be able to see the response and the preview is much better. Okay, so here's all of our hat stuff, right? Um, and so we can see like the links, where are the actual images, URLs. And if I grab like the small URL, if it'll let me do that. Oh boy. We can go open it and there's, there are hats. Um, so this, like this works obviously. And if I, if I clean this up a little bit more, what I can do is we can get um, the form data from, what is it? New form data event.target, I think that is. And then um, what we could do as our search is here we would be able to say like form data dot get query. Okay, we're gonna see if I can do that from memory. That's a that's a pretty new API for me. And then when I reload, I should be able to put in like corgi search, and it did not work. I I got got an error. Um, what is my error? Unexpected end of input. Oh, that's just because I have a syntax error. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, there we go. We're getting we're getting back a, a good response here. So let's look at this and then I don't know, here. And then we'll preview. Grab one of these. Get the uh, the URLs and grab out the small one. Perfect. Okay, so this on the surface looks good, but the problem is we just violated the terms of service for Unsplash's API because we can't ship this. Like if I go out to my site and I look at the, the elements in the source code, like it's right here. Anybody who wants to can find it and steal it. Um, so that's like, this is the problem. We, we can't do that. It's not only is it against the terms of service, but this means that anybody who wants to can impersonate us on the internet. Um, with Unsplash, maybe you're like, oh, well, that's not a big deal. But like, imagine you're doing this where somebody clicks this button and it posts to Slack, or it sends an, it sends a comment to um, to GitHub, or yeah, like it, it processes a transaction on Stripe. You somebody, hackers, you, you dirty exactly hackers. Exactly that. Like, somebody with bad intent could get this API token and then they can go do whatever they want and pretend that they're you, which is really, really bad news. So and there's probably crawlers that go around and just crawl the internet for absolutely. secrets. Yeah, and I think if you look at, um, there are like, what are they called? Um, there are like those password dumps, like have I been pwned.com and stuff. Um, they just go and look for where those happen and like, collect all of the things and, and kind of build this database of like exposed credentials. Um, so, so effectively what we're trying to do here is fix this. We want to make sure that we can still make this call. Like we still need to be able to make an authenticated call, but we can't put it in the client side JavaScript. And that's where these API functions come in um, or these serverless functions. So let's, uh, Oh no, <laughs> David in the chat. It's like unsplash legal department here. Um, exactly, but that's exactly it, right? So, uh, so effectively, what we want to do is we want to change all of this out to be like let's get all of this out of here, and that's not what we want to do anymore. So instead, we want to move this sensitive data into our handler somewhere. Um, and now this, this isn't going to work as is. We're going to have to do some work, so I'm going to comment it out so it doesn't break. But um, what we can do instead is now we can say that our response is, let's say we're going to await fetch, and we are now going to send this to Netlify functions unsplash search. And all we need to send in now is a body, and we'll JSON stringify um, I guess we can do the form data 
or no, we should we should actually make this an object. So we'll we'll do form data dot get query. Okay. So now when we send this, and then let's uh, console log the response. So now when we send this, we're we're sending in an object. So we can in our handler, we can get that out. So let's get the query by JSON parse event.body. And then we can just send back you searched for query. And assuming all went well, we'll now have access to our query and we'll be able to actually see what happened. So let's look at our console and we'll search for Corgi. And we should get back, something went wrong. Missing initializer on const declaration, oh. Let's play spot my bug. Um, missing initializer on const declaration. Was that it? That was it. Okay, let's try again. No bug. Corgi. Failed to get fetch. Oh, um, we forgot to tell it what the method was. So we're going to send it with the post method. Okay, try again. Hmm. What went wrong here? Something didn't work. And we can see out here, cannot read property body of undefined. Which means I'm just missing something, something silly in uh, how the functions work. So let's look at functions. And there is a build with JavaScript and it's gonna show us what comes back. Ah. That's my fault. I was destructuring and I shouldn't have been. So instead of event like this, we just get event like this. Okay, one more try. This time, this time it's gonna work. If I can find my, here. So we're gonna search for Corgi and it sends back 200 true body is a readable stream. <laughs> Holy buckets, did that just work? Do I need to send back a, I might need to send back a header for like the content type. So let's do that. We'll send back a header and we'll say the content type is application JSON. And now the browser will do all the work for us so that we don't have to, at least I hope it does, let's see body still says a readable stream. What am I getting wrong here? Um, oh, I know what I did. We use fetch, right? Whenever you use fetch, you have to tell the response how to use the response. So we need to set response JSON. And then we can also catch on an error and say, for now, we'll just console error. One more time. This 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 time definitely gonna work. Ha ha! Show me Perfect. Salad. <laughs> so that is the the general like method, right? So if we if we look at what we've done, we are still using fetch to send off a request to an endpoint. We we've effectively created our own REST API in this sense. Um, the difference is that now instead of having to send that authentication for our app, we are able to kind of box it up here so that it's safe. Um, so during development, like um, since you lose some visibility with it going through, do you typically just kind of pass something through just so that you have that visibility? Well, so what, like the way that I start to look at these is that these become independently testable, right? So check this out, like now I can go in um, here to my 
Netlify functions unsplash search. I can take this right back into Postman. And so now in a like I can I can do something like this and send in um, in my body. How would I, if I wanted to do it as JSON, do I send it in? Uh, you can do raw. Raw. And you'll need a post, right? Yeah. Oh, maybe that's what I need is so we'll post. And then if you do raw, that drop down on the right that says text right now. Ooh, nice. Okay. So then I would be able to send in like query and corgis. And this should send back a response. You got to scroll. Yeah. That says Ooh. you search for corgis. Right, so now we like if we need visibility, we can go right back into Postman and we can continue to use it. Um, so let's actually we'll we'll use that. We'll use Postman here to build out the rest of our our function. Um, so I'm going to come in here now, and we want to let's let's put this into Netlify actually. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's let's create this Netlify function. Um, or let's create this Netlify site, rather. So I'm going to echo node modules into git ignore, because we don't want to actually commit those. So now we can see we've got the functions, netlify.toml, package lock. OK, all that's all good. Um, so I'm going to git add everything. Oops, git add everything. And then we'll git commit. I'm going to use the hub tools to create a new repo. And then I'm going to git push set upstream to origin master. OK. And this site is now live on the internet. Um, so here is our, our work in progress if you want to see it. Oh, shit. I definitely <laughs> committed with the secret in place. Or wait, did I? Did I, cut, did I cut it? I totally didn't. It's OK. We're going to have to roll it anyways. Damn it. Um, <laughs> well. So yeah. Anyway. <laughs> oh no! You hackers! Uh, you figures, you figures dirty I would hackers! Do that. Um, but so now uh, I can actually. I think what I can do is I can cut that, and then we can uh, get commit amend. Then I can get push force, and I believe that'll remove any. Let's check. Should show one commit. Good. And then if I look at my functions, are they gone? They're not gone. Oh, did I not? Didn't actually. Duh. OK, let's, uh, let's get add all, and then we'll run git commit amend. Then we'll get push course. Okay. And now if we look at the function, the Yay. it's gone. Good. Good good. And there's only one commit. So yeah, so that that's no longer in history. One of the benefits of like having only one commit is if you force push you don't break everything. Um, but uh, yeah, so okay, so anyways, that that was terrible. We shouldn't have done that. But let's um, let's Netlify in it this site now. So I want to create and configure a new one. I'm going to put it into my own team, um, and we will we'll call this uh, secure Jamstack API requests. Jason, are you using a different CLI tool right now? Then Th this is the the Netlify CLI. So it's um, I just ran Netlify in it. Um, and so that's going to leave us with no build command. We want to publish source. And there we go. So now if I run Netlify open, we'll see that the site is building. And because there's not really anything to build, it's just going to stand up the build bot, publish these functions for us, and, um, and take us live. So we can see all of that happening in our very noisy logs. 
You are so fast and efficient. This would have taken me two days to do on my own stream. <laughs> well, and, and this is kind of the idea, right? Is like, we want all of this to be really fast with Netlify, like as, as painless as possible. And so here is our site. It's on the internet now. You can, you can go look it. Um, and if we search for corgis, oh no, what does it like? Unexpected end of JSON input? Did I do something wrong here? I mean, clearly I did, but what does it like? Unsplash search. Hey, Lotus Corgis. That looks correct. Hmm. Let's look at the logs and see what it says. So I can go to functions. I can look at my function. Looks like it's running, but it's not. Wonder why it's doing that. Did I break it? It's still working locally, though. Okay, still working locally. Interesting. Okay, that's all right. We'll uh, we'll we'll get it running here, and then we'll debug later in case it's just something that like works itself out as we finish the app, and it's you know not actually something we need to stress about yet. Um, so let's let's get our our actual request going. So for that, we don't have access to fetch in Node. But there is a, an API that we can use, which is really helpful. So I'm going to go into the functions directory. And we're going to make this into its own node app. And this is important. So what I'm, what I'm doing right now is because the functions are deployed separately, they have to have all of their dependencies contained in that functions folder. So if we are adding node dependencies, if we're adding utility files, if we're accessing local data, all of that needs to be in the functions folder, or we have to have our build step move all that stuff into the functions folder. And the, the reason for that is that what we do is we take the functions folder and just straight up send it to Amazon. And so if it, read, if it tries to read something outside of functions, it won't be there after it gets deployed. Um, so because of that, anything that we're going to use inside is going to be installed in the functions folder itself. So I'm going to install node fetch. And now uh, I also need to update my Netlify Tomal. Instead of no build command, I actually want to move into the functions directory, run an npm install, and then we'll just move back out. Um, so that way, we make sure that everything that the functions need is there. Uh, and then we can come back and, and do the rest of our, our build. So how come you build the dependencies and wrap them into that file that is hosted on Lambda instead of like calling out, um, like requiring or calling in via CDN or something like that? Uh, I mean, you, you can do that, but it's like one more network hop. So in, in this case, um, just for the like, for what we're doing, I find that this, this is kind of a more like a it's common like Pattern. Lightweight enough to include in the in the package. Yeah, and like node fetch is is tiny, teeny tiny. Okay. Um, so if you like, where this is node fetch, it's got no dependencies, so it's the only node module that's installed, and it has like there's just not a whole lot of code going in. It's it's a pretty thin wrapper. Um, so it's you know it, these are always trade offs, right? We have to we have to choose what the right thing is for for our particular use case. Um, npm install prefix functions. That's dope. Oh, I just learned something today. Apparently, I don't have to move into that function. I can just, I can just run that. That's cool. Okay. Um, so now we've got this, and what I want is I don't want to actually have to put the the token in here either. I want to get it from the environment. Um, so in Nellify, I can go to my. Where are you at? Up here go to my settings, and then in my deploy settings, I have environment variables. 
So this is for my, my site that I'm in now. Like this is a secure Jamstack API request site that we just created. I want to set some environment variables for it. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say unsplash API token and let's add that value in. So I'm gonna drop that in here, save. Okay, so now I've got this and if I stop and start my server, let's run Netlify dev. It got pulled in. So we're able to now use this centrally without having to like trade around a file or anything. So similar to Postman, we have access to these environment variables at a team level um, without having to, uh, to like pass around a file or, or send them to each other. Um, and do your team members have access to these variables because they have access to the project? To the site, yeah. So if you to tried to okay. if you tried to run this locally and you didn't have OAuth access, because I'm logged in, right? Like I had to run a Netlify login to get access to stuff. Um, it it wouldn't work. So uh, now in here, instead of needing to use, uh, let's. I'm probably just going to set this up more directly. So we'll do a method of get. We will set headers. And our headers will be authorization. And then we'll send client ID and process.m.unsplash API token. Okay. And then we need to send in the, uh, the params. I don't even need to do that because we sent it up here. Like we, we could send it in the in the body as well, but whatever. Um, so now we've got this. So we'll await that. Response equals await fetch. Um, and then we can skip this part, I think, because we just don't. We want that back. Um, so we're going to get our response. And now instead of just sending back our Query. Let's let's send back our response. Um, let's see, what does fetch send us back? I think it's like data and errors. And let's just double check that before I fall down a rabbit hole. Um, it will give us response, response JSON. Oh, is it just the, it's just the data? Cool. Okay, so let's log it. Let's let's log it and see what happens. So I'm on my local machine. We saved, so it just reloaded that for us. And so now I should be able, in my local version here, to, let's reload. And I'm gonna search for, uh, let's say, hats. Unexpected token. So that means I did something wrong. Await is only valid in an async function. Did I forget to make this async? Ooh, I sure did. Okay. All right. So basically, we we can just uh, set up an async function here and send back whatever we want. Uh, so let's let's try that one more time. Still doesn't like it. It doesn't like. Form data is not defined. That makes sense because we didn't use form data this time. We have query instead. So instead, we'll just set this to be query. Try it again. Hey, there's our data. So now we are getting back data and this is authenticated data. But if we look at the, the source code on the page, um, we don't make, there's no like authentication provided here. Uh, and that is really, really powerful because we're able to do the same thing. Um, and if we go into Postman, you know, we can do the same thing here. We can we can send, and we get back all of our data, which is pretty slick. Um, yeah, I love this stuff. It's so nice. But yeah, so.
what would I use the um, functions console for? What would I use the um, the dashboard that you have? That console. The dashboard. Um, sorry, can the you say that again? The Netlify site um, da uh, console. Here. The logs. Oh yeah. So anything that gets logged out of our function will be um, will be shown here. So like here we've got some errors and these look like the ones that I had for whatever reason. Um, I don't know I don't know why those happened, but apparently I managed to break it. but so these uh, these are all of our invocations. We can see that like the the function ran in like one millisecond. Um, so that's great. That's what we want. So next, let's deploy this and see if it cleared up that issue that we had. Um, so to, just to recap, we pulled in a node fetch helper. We uh, pulled a query string out of the actual form submission, which is coming from our, our HTML form. And then we basically proxy this request. We send it off to Unsplash with the API token that's now protected. Um, and we then uh, respond, return the response, right? Um, so that is, uh, that's basically what we were after. Oh, I want that to be response JSON. I bet that's what went wrong, is that it was sending back, let's try this again. So I send this, get back a response, and the preview that it Unexpected end of JSON input. Oh, I'm still on the wrong site. A da doy. Okay. There we go. So now we get back actual JSON. Okay. So I think I think what was happening is I was uh, encoding that JSON response to text, and that I, I was noticing that this didn't look right here. Um, but I think that's because it got text encoded. So if I run it again, that's what I expected to see. JSON. It's actually JSON. Yeah. Um, okay, I have to say JSON instead of Jason because otherwise I sound like I'm speaking in the third person. Jason. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, ooh, so here's a good question. So now that we've done this, this serverless function, what's to prevent somebody from using it from anywhere? Um, and that's where cross-origin request security, I think, cores, that's where that comes in. Um, because by default, cores will only let you request from this, a site with the same domain. Um, so you have to explicitly say you like any origin is allowed, and and you can um, you can set this. Let me find the docs on this. So if you look at oh cross origin resource sharing. JSON, JSON. <laughs> um, so this is uh, this is kind of how it works, but ultimately what you have to do is you send back any he any origins that you want to allow. So you can set it to be any any origin, um, and if it's an open resource, like that makes sense. You say, hey, anybody can hit this endpoint, but by default, we probably want to restrict that to the smallest number of sites available, so that people can't abuse the resource. Um, so this is kind of like like here for our site, we would probably just want to set that to be only allowed by the the actual Jamstack app. Um, okay. could, otherwise, somebody could could. Uh, so you're you know, whitelisting your own traffic or the expected traffic. Yeah, um, and and so a couple of good things are getting brought up in the chat here that that's only respected by web browsers. Um, yeah, it is only respected by web browsers. Like I, this type of a proxy is assuming that the data that you want to get is something that would be displayed in a browser. Um, and also, it can't be, like you can't set up a, a serverless function to have personally identifiable information unless it's a single user. So, um, so there's a difference between like, I am logged in and I need to make a request. If, if I'm logged in and I'm making the request, I'm gonna put that in as my authorization header and you know it's, it's a secure connection between me and whatever resource I'm requesting. Um, if you have something more generalized, like yeah, you can you can always work around it. You can scrape it and things like that. But that's that 
comes down to a kind of you you want to be responsible in your app design to make sure that if something shouldn't be accessible uh, without having some kind of valid auth, then you kind of have to be like careful about that. Um, but but yeah, so like like Jackie says, you know, if you've got curl, you can just go straight past that that core's restriction and it'll it'll just work. Um, so you know, be be mindful when you're designing that like this isn't a silver bullet. It's it, it will protect the keys, but it doesn't protect access to that thing. Um, so if somebody wants to to abuse your APIs, unless you require them to pass an identifying token with it, they they can abuse your APIs. It's just going to be harder uh, if you set up like the the origin control. Um, they'll have to actually build things for it. They won't be able to just like hot link to your stuff from their own websites. That then um, brings us back to let's let's deploy this thing, and I believe we're ready to we're ready to roll here. So let's uh, let's make sure that we've got this all set. I'm going to get add all. We'll get commit and say um, function is searching, and then we'll push. You have such good Git practices too. I'm trying not to do the eight dash am. Oh yeah, I well, I mean, I don't mind the am. I just I I'm very paranoid. Like, it's clearly not helping me as I committed tokens <laughs> earlier today. But like, I'm I'm always trying to I try not to like accidentally commit a node modules folder that's not uh, committed or something. But I'll tell you what's really made a big difference is I have this s alias, which is um is like a Git status with a couple flags applied to make it smaller. So now anytime that I'm I'm in here, I just tap S and I see like, oh, is there anything there? And then like after I run the git add, I just run S again to make sure that what I committed was what I meant to commit. And it, it, it cleaned up my workflow a ton. Secrets. Yeah, yeah little little hacks like that. <laughs> like it's it's funny too because that it functionally that is so few characters, right? But practically, what it means is that what I wasn't doing before, which is like type git status, type git add, type git status, type git commit. You I hackers, just, I, you, I was you not dirty hackers. Adding the, um, you know, adding the, the S in here and being able to do that has made it so that I actually do those checks. So it's just these yeah. little things that help me smooth the path to do the right thing. Um, you know, it's a, that's my mantra, right? Make the right thing the easy thing. Um, versus just the muscle memory. Yeah, exactly, right? And I, I, don't, I never want willpower to be the thing that, um, that makes that happen. Oh, like this? Yeah, git status SB. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really, really, really powerful stuff. So I would, I would highly recommend that. It's, uh, it's a, a good little life hack. Um, if you are interested, I have my dot files with all of my aliases linked up um, at uh, jason.af slash uses. So now I believe our site should be deployed. Our function is searching, it is deployed. Let's go back out and fingers crossed it's gonna actually work for us. Hey! Ah. Look at that, we have a functioning a functioning app. Now it's not you know displaying anything and, and you know maybe that's okay. Um, in a in a perfect world, this would probably display the hats. <laughs> like, but you know that's not really what we are after today. What we are after today is how do we protect these keys? How do we make sure that we can make requests without exposing API tokens? Um, and I think also we can see. Let's see Netlify functions unsplash search, and then we'll set a query of corgi. Unsplash. Oh, every single time. There. Doesn't like unsplash search. Oh, I have to post to this one. Oh, that's good. That, that's that's actually what we want. So let's go back in here, and let's go here. We're gonna post, and I want to post a body raw JSON, and we'll say query is corgis. Um, and then we don't need anything else. Like there's no authorization. There's no other parameters or headers. We can just send it, and we get back. 
a result. So this, I mean, this is actually really handy, like being able to do this. The, the other thing that I really like is these are links. So I can click these and go see what I'm gonna get back with like all the sizes and everything. Um, that's super handy. Uh, the, what was that that I just saw? Just more metadata about that. Request. That's really cool. It shows you how long it took to, to complete. Somebody's talking about Pixie. Postman just released support for that like two weeks ago. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, learn. That's, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so Jackie, my, my dot files are under uh, uses. There's a, a link to them there. But um, yeah, this is this is very cool. So I, this this kind of this feels successful to me. I feel like we did a good job here. And we got I the site. learned. My only bar for this uh, event was that I learned something, and I did. We did it. We learned. Um, I'm I'm into it. So yeah, chat. This this is not uh, actually. Let's add a little bit of information here um, because we didn't get to this part. So what we'll say is open the console to see search results. So we'll just make sure that it's clear what we're doing, um, and then here we go. Results. Okay, so we'll push, and then that'll be live in just a second here. Um, this is another thing that I really like about the Netlify stuff is like you know it's especially when you're working with little sites like this, just plain HTML. They they're so fast to get live. It's it's a couple of seconds, you know, twenty seconds, and the site is up and running, and we you know we don't have to like. Just that abstraction over Lambda with oh, so defining nice. our functions and then doing the environment variables, that saves like so mm -hmm. much heartache. Yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. Um, makes a, a huge difference for me. Like I, I never used uh, Lambda functions because they were so hard to set up. And then as soon as I, I figured out how quickly you could set them up with something like uh, with like Netlify, now I'm like, oh, I can use these instead. Because before I would just set up an Express server. I was like, that's faster, but th now this is faster. So I'm just going toward whatever the fastest thing is, right? I want to get stuff up and running. Um, and the fact that this is like fast and free and yeah. like just lets you build something really quickly without having to stand up a bunch of servers, it's, it's so nice. And that it just makes serverless functions more accessible to more people. It, it, right, and that's the goal, right? Like what, what we want to do and, and like one of my, one of the things that's kind of driven all of my career decisions is like I really like working on stuff that makes it easier for people to build cool things. I don't, I don't care if you're really good at building all the, the strata that makes it possible to build cool things. I wanna unblock you so that you can do the cool thing. Like, you know, do the thing that, that's in your head and don't burn all your energy and creative time like standing up a bunch of foundational stuff and boilerplate and, and all this like configuration nightmare. Like get all that stuff out of the way. Just build the cool thing you wanna build. And that's like, that's what I want. And, that's that's what led me to you know when I was at IBM I worked in in developer tooling like internal tools when I went to Gatsby it was because Gatsby unblocks this this whole process for quickly getting websites up and now I'm at Netlify to take that even one step further how do we how do we eliminate as many barriers as possible for anybody on any stack to get something up on the internet as fast as possible yeah and that's one of the reasons why I like my job at Postman because mm -hmm. yeah developers know Postman and they use Postman but there's people that don't know what an API is, don't know, don't know how to write a lick of code, and they're just mm -hmm. pushing a button, and then they get to see a lot more stuff that you would never be able to see. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> where is the amen command? <laughs> um, I, yeah, I need that one. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, but yeah, so let's, uh, I, I think this is a good place to, to probably start wrapping up. I think we've, we've accomplished what we came to accomplish. We've got the code up online. Uh, you can see up here, if you want to take a look at what we built today, that is all up to date and, and uh, reviewable. I'll clean this up a little bit later. Um, Joyce, thank you so much for joining us. Where should people go if they want to follow up with you or learn more about you and or Postman? So Postman just launched our live stream a few weeks ago. I think we're about to have our sixth time on Twitch. So we Ooh. have, it's called Get Postman because Postman was taken. <laughs> Okay. 
So that's us there. And um, I mean, you have like, these people are like helping you in the chat and it's amazing. asking good questions. And I mean, mm -hmm. one day, one day we will have what you have, Jason. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the thing that I love about Twitch and, and the reason that I do Twitch instead of like a YouTube show is because of the chat, like having people here to, you know, keep me humble, like pointing out that I'm definitely getting a lot of this wrong. Uh, but also the the backup, the support, the jokes, the 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 sense of community over just me talking to a camera um, is really really nice. And and so you know, chat as always, you are wonderful. Um, hey, chat. Joyce, is there anywhere that I should send people if they want to keep up with you? Let me let me pull up your Twitter for sure. Uh, you should all go follow Joyce. What's go what's the story me. behind? Oh, is it E Y or A Y? Uh, American spelling. That is not going to help me. I'm sorry. A Y. <laughs> uh, yeah, go go follow Joyce. Um, yeah. What's the story? Where did Petunia Gray come from? Uh, I should have a better like line for this, but it's my dead cat. I actually, can you see this? <laughs> uh, Petey, it's my dead cat. Pet okay. Petunia, Petunia Gray, Petunia the Gray. Oh, um, okay. May, may she rest in peace. <laughs> I like it. Did, so did this start as like a, tw this was a Twitter account for your cat? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, my online presence is a comedy of errors. Like uh, my headshot, I was just telling you about earlier, my headshot for this oh, show it's so was good. a placeholder <laughs> that accidentally got submitted. So. Let me let me find this. It's so good. Look, look at this. I love it so much. It's just like it, ribs. <laughs> <laughs> It's very on brand for me. I I am very I am very into it. Uh, so yeah, Joyce, this was a this was a great time. Chat, thank you as always for for showing up. And make yeah. sure that you tune in later this week. We are going to continue work on Secret Sandwich, which uh, I won't go into how it works now, but it's a really silly game that uh, I would love for for y'all to come and and play. This is continuing on the work that Marissa Morby and Maggie Appleton have done on the show. So you can go back and find the the episodes where we did the UX research and the, uh, the branding for it. Um, and on this show, we're gonna do the actual design. We're gonna start making it come together as a website. Uh, and then we've got a lot of good stuff coming up next week. This one actually got rescheduled, so that's gonna happen in June, but uh, we've got more coming up. This one's gonna be huge. Uh, we are going to show you how to do subscription management and access management. So how do you build a Jamstack site where somebody can pay for access to a section of the site? And how do you make sure that that gets updated in real time that, you know, if somebody that if they cancel their subscription, they lose access, all that stuff. It's going to be such a good episode. Um, so definitely mark your calendar for that one. It's going to be a great time. And with that, y'all, it's it's uh, it's it's raid time. I think let's let's go raid somebody. Joyce, thank you so much. Um, we thank will you. see you next time. Bye.